Welcome to 13. Let's go. This week, um, interesting enough, I'm going to talk about one of my biggest jokes in the gig economy. Um, autonomous vehicles. Will they be real in 2025? According to Uber, according to Lyft, or according to Cruise, and accord according to General Motors, they will be by the end of 2025. Um, Uber has made its third partnership with Cruise. Um, Cruise is a sub-company of General Motors, and they are an LLC. So if you understand the way that those work, you'll get where we're going with this. Um, as we all know, and I, what I really want to point out before we even get into this fake new PR, PR story that is burying some other stories, mostly violent stories, and actually a couple of Uber teen stories are being buried by this. If right now you were to Google Uber, most likely the whole first page will be about the autonomous vehicle merger that just happened. Um, as you can see by the title of the thumbnail, uh, 99 problems and Uber still can't solve one. That's kind of the daily path at Uber. Um, there is some real kickback from drivers right now. And Uber is um, having a hard time, harder than, harder than usual, getting drivers to be on the platform, especially at times that they really need them on the platform. There are no perks in most markets. There are no, there's no real surging going on. There's no, um, there's really no price increase. You're not making more doing rideshare. Um, as rideshare professor has been talking about for, since I known him <laughs> and, uh, since, um, Jeff over at, uh, Mike drop barbecue has been saying a lot. And as I've been saying for years, uh, private rides, you know, private clients, doesn't have to just be rideshare, whatever. Private clients. You guys are independent contractors. I talk about this all the time. You're independent contractors. You run your life. You, you are a business. You can treat it as such, or you can be that kind of entity any, anyway, deal with the tax parts of it, see what you like, and just use it for the flexibility and not really understand what it is. But you are an independent contractor. And I think we need to start hitting on that more and more and more because... You want to be an independent contractor. That anybody that says they want to be a union employee, like I've been saying, I, I question that. I don't question them wanting to be in a union, but I question that if Uber, Lyft, or DoorDash went to a union model, I don't think any of the people who want to be union employees would stick around to be part of it with Uber, Lyft, or DoorDash, or any of the companies. They would go on to established companies Maybe a General Motors. Established companies that have unions, where the unions might do something a little more than the unions are trying to do with the gig space. In the gig space, what are they going to do for you? Tell you when to strike? That would only be of any value if you were a W-2 employee of these companies. Some of the apps are moving much quicker towards a W-2 path. In fact, this week I was in a debate with myself whether to do a piece on DoorDash and deactivations and the trajectory of DoorDash or wait another week because some more news will be coming in this week that I am expecting along with some, I'm, there's like three other things I'm following that I know things are going to happen with. So next week, we're probably going to be talking about that. But today, um, the thing that I want to point out to you guys, if you haven't been around since this has all been beginning, I've been doing rideshare since 2015. Um, Uber had Anthony, uh, Lewandowski and, or he was with Alphabet Waymo, which is Google. Um, and Uber got him. And in that transfer, when he left Alphabet Waymo to come to Uber Autonomous, and this was in 2017, he happened to take the files, the confidential files of their product and put them in his briefcase and bring them on over to Uber. And to be honest, he's not the only one. This is, there's been a lot of people who have done this. And right now, in fact, as we see this shift, like, oh, Uber is going to be the autonomous leader. I've been doing, an, I've been doing UberLiftDrivers.com website for eight years. And I've talked about this 99 times. 
They've partnered up with Bolt. They've partnered up with Yandex. They've bought Yandex in Russia. They sold Yandex back. They, um, they partnered up with Waymo. They stole from Waymo. They got in trouble from Waymo. Anthony Lewandowski switched over to Uber Autonomous and went to jail for stealing intellectual property from Waymo. Then Uber partnered with Waymo again, then again, then again, then Cruise, then this, then this. Look, this Uber is the vessel where, or it's the platform to the vessel where once there is autonomous, yes, most probably, since Uber is the global one, and there's a couple others, there's Didi, and there's some ones, but the ones I'm talking about, none of you guys, unless you've been out of country, have ever used. So there's other, there's Bolt over in Europe. There's there's other ride shares that are pretty big too, but they're not here. Uber's global, including here. Um, pretty much anywhere there's ride share, Uber is there. Um, sometimes they get kicked out of a country and they come back but it just takes a briefcase of money. But now Tesla had their idea, wasn't such a great idea. I, I think everybody saw it as that, like why would I buy a Tesla and then allow it to do rideshare or things like that at night? But there's a person transferring over from Tesla to Uber right now. Because right now in the press, Uber is gonna be autonomous in 2025. It makes, you guys might be seeing this for the first time going, well, what, you know, maybe they will be. Okay, well, I've already been through this game enough times. 2019 was a target of, and a target that was probably 2020 was a for sure. Autonomous vehicles without drivers will be on the road servicing passengers in 50 cities or more by 2020. I have tons of articles on uberliftdrivers.com about this. This is Uber's staff saying for sure, for certain we're there. No, you're not. In fact, you tried to get to level four and there's no approval still. So just because they re-teamed up with Cruz, who was kicked out of California for killing a person um, and is already having their license challenged, GM almost dropped them. And so now Cruz is saying, well, we're going to do just EVs and the Chevy Bolts, and those will be the only cars doing it. That doesn't make it safe. The problem is the LIDARs don't work. The problem is weather dependent. Snow, rain, they don't work. Um, the problem is the sensors the problem is the cost of the vehicles these are not cheap cars a, a chevy bolt might be a cheap car but what they're having to put onto these all the components are not makes it not a cheap car makes you you're coming up on you know 300 400 thousand plus for a vehicle that doesn't work i mean the lidar operates at 65 to 70 percent efficiency and that's why they test in places like Arizona, because it's desert. They don't have to do snow. If it's rain, they just turn them off for the day. Um, so it's very controlled environment in an uncontrolled environment. So they let these things out on the loose in certain cities, but they're not working. And there were even in San Francisco and other places, there were even unmanned crews and Waymos. Well, now they're not unmanned anymore. There might be a couple unmanned in Waymo in Tucson, but even those are only under because of Waymo One and their new program and deal with Tucson or with Phoenix. Because even what this new deal is is saying by twenty by the end of twenty twenty five, uh, Chevy Bolt based um, vehicles will be partnered uh, with and will be on the road without a safety driver. No, you don't know that, and that's what every time you do one of these stories, it reads. But I will tell you this, there's a lot of people who switch these companies or who steal plans and come over to this or you hear about this and that's not the real news. The real news is they're just marketing people who are really hoping to, I mean, let's be honest, Uber right now is holding its 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 value in trade and it's not worth its value. We know this, we know this. And to say that they're a technology company, I mean, I don't know if it's just like kind of like new new batches of drivers. Maybe there's like new batches of investors who get interested in Uber. Because even if you guys don't follow the news, I'm sure you've seen the stories that say, you know, bullish on Uber, bearish on Uber. And they're like day to day, meaning like Uber's going to do great. Uber's going to bomb. And they just change day to day. Right now, they're using this kickoff because there's a lot of violence going on in the platforms. And there's a lot of drivers who are starting to be very serious about taking private clients or not work, not taking 
really many offers at all from Uber because they're just not worth it. And by that, I mean, people have gotten to the point where even if they're not keeping the best records, they know not only am I not making money here, I'm losing money. Um, this is becoming a big and bigger deal. Um, to be honest, why isn't all the chameleons of dollars that are going into this going to the drivers? Because let's be honest, and Uber, if you're watching, you know, you are nothing more than a dispatch platform. You're nothing more than a, than a simple algorithm that dispatches cars. Now, how you choose to use that algorithm and how you pick a driver and a passenger and match them, that's all up to you. But the real reality of it is, it's a simple dispatch. And by that, I mean the original concept and what it's supposed to be is the closest driver to the passenger requesting a ride, that driver will be notified with an offer and they can go get the passenger. Sounds like a simple dispatch system to me. In fact, it's, it sounds like one that you don't even need a human involvement, in which case you're talking about autonomous, simple dispatch, humanless dispatch. Um, and we know what an awful, awful, awful experience their customer service is, along with most of the gig companies have the worst customer service there is. Um, some of the smaller ones do better. But they will be moving ahead. Uh, the, CEO, the CEO of um, uh, Kyle Vogt, who was the CEO of Cruise, left. He was a founder. Um, he has now been replaced by Mark Witten. And, you know, they're going to start... Um, they're going to start doing this in the, here's the cities. Cruise has relaunched its service with safety drivers. Again, with safety drivers. So it's not driverless. That's just somebody to pin it on. In fact, if for any of you safety drivers in, in Houston, Phoenix, or Dallas, go look at the story from 20, uh, 18, 19 about the driver who was making $20 an hour and got charged with manslaughter because they were a safety a safety driver. You don't want to be a safety driver for this trash. No way. And if you do, you better have a lawyer look at a document and make sure you are not being responsible for what that vehicle does because you are working with non-working parts. So you know what, guys? Hit it hard. Go get private clients and make the platforms work for you. You are an independent contractor and you have every right to do this. And that's my two cents, and that's 13 minutes of gig news in just under 13 minutes. Peace, y'all.